This ain't your normal run-of-the-mill CLA. This is one of the first ones to come to these shores. It's called the Prima Edizione, otherwise known as the Edition 1. And think of it as a really kick-ass CLA. It's got black wheels, it's got a chrome front grille, and uh, hopefully you guys like yellow, because if you don't, you're not gonna like the interior. The stitching on the door panels, the armrest, top of the dash, on the seats, console, and even the floor mats, all yellow. But wait, there's more. The insets on the seats, they are yellow as well with a gray racing stripe right next to them. And then the piece de resistance, each floor mat says Prima Edizione. For us, one of the key sort of thresholds was if we're gonna connect to a younger buyer, you, you can have the best product package in the world, but if people can't afford it, then you've missed the mark. Yeah. So for us from day one, we said this needs to come in at under 30,000. That was seven years ago. So a good friend of the family, he emigrated from Cyprus and became somewhat successful and he bought a Mercedes. And uh, he used to tell me, you know, uh, Motoman, the uh, Mercedes, when they all get up to speed, the old Mercedes, they drive, uh, they drive the same. And you know what, he's got kind of a point. When you get an S-Class, a C-Class, an E-Class, all up to speed, they kind of do drive the same. Granted, how they get there, that's the big difference. So here we are in the CLA class. What happens when it gets up to speed? Put a couple hundred miles on this thing over two days. And I gotta tell you, yeah, when it gets up to speed, it does drive like other Mercedes. But there's one major exception. The wheelbase is significantly shorter, so it doesn't have quite the same suppleness that, say, an E-Class would have. But really, when you go into cities in, like, D.C., where I was, you could dart in and out of traffic with a short wheelbase like that. Our new designer, Gordon Wagner, is about 44 years old. So there's a almost a changing of the guard when it comes to design wow. over in Stuttgart. So 44. now we've got a, a younger guy who cut his teeth as the head of our design studio in Los Angeles. So the number one car market in the world was where he spent a substantive amount of his time. Now he becomes the head designer for Mercedes-Benz over in Stuttgart, and this is, the out, this is the byproduct of that. A couple of years back, Bob Lutz and I had a good discussion at the New York Auto Show, and basically the topic was, one can make a pizza so cheap that no one wants to eat it. So if you're bringing out a car, say, at a certain price point, you could be a hero, a really easy hero, by taking cost out and just saying, hey, here's the car, we don't really care what it is. Um, that could have been the case here, but it's not. Here are two examples. Look at the window stripping. This could have been one piece that would have gotten to their price point, but in, in this case, what they did, it's layered, so there's always a perfect seal against the window. And then, a cup holder. Not a big deal, right? In this case, could have been just hard plastic, but what they did is they put carpeting at the bottom for easy traction. This car, not a fire breathing monster like the 355 horsepower CLA 45, but it's not flat footed either. Around town, it's perfect. If you wanna go zip in and out of town like that was a couple hundred miles in two days, but part of that was driving around DC. And can I just say, the traffic in DC is a gazillion times worse than Los Angeles. So people in LA stop complaining. Um, but I digress. The energy of this thing is perfect going in and around cities, but it's not the kind of car, like, it's not an E63, okay? Are we clear? One of the key, sort of a key moment um, in, the, in the development process is, was the realization that if we're gonna hit younger buyers, sort of the, the, the connectivity package um, is really important. And there were some debates, you know, kind of back and forth from the development team, should we be willing to spend that kind of money um, for a car that's $29,900? Could we afford to do this? So essentially we got, uh, we got a bunch of Gen Wires together and we asked them to talk to our global head of R&D. That was the question. Tell them, tell them how important your iPhone it is to you and tell them how important being able to in integrate your connected life into the car. And I got to bring that to Stuttgart with me and in the, in a, in, in the form of a two hour presentation, we went through and the takeaway was, uh, this isn't a should we do this, this is an absolute must and that's how we got it through and the, the CLA has got one of the best connected in-car experiences uh, in the business. So if I'm being completely honest here, the kind of person that's going to roll into a Mercedes-Benz dealer for this car 
they're not going to care if it's all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, rear drive, whatever it is. They're just going to be like, you know what, I can get a three-point star for this price, then definitely. But for you and I, we're car guys. How does the car drive? That's all we care about. And the reality of the situation is, I spent a lot of time trying to find flaws in a front-wheel drive Mercedes. And namely, you'd think it'd be torque steer, right? I have pushed this thing around corners. I've driven this thing now for two days. And I haven't found one hint of torque steer at all. Everyone has had someone tell us the following phrase. Be careful what you wish for, because you will get it. Uh, I know I've heard many mentors in life tell me this. And uh, basically, this car is kind of that. Think about this for a minute. The Mercedes CLA, I know Steve spent a lot of time talking about $30,000 for the base car. Now the actual car that you're gonna see in your dealership, probably 32, 34, whatever it is. But here's the question. For the same money, you can get a Ford Fusion. You can get a really nice Toyota Camry, or you could get a Mercedes-Benz CLA. The equation is kind of the same. They're both front wheel drive cars, but the Ford, the Toyota, they're a bit longer, bigger cars, more family oriented. But it still comes down to for your 30 grand or 34 grand or whatever it turns out to be, what are you going to buy? Something that looks like this, and drives like a Mercedes, or are you going to buy the bigger, more family friendly Ford? So click here to watch one of our 250 other episodes. Click here to subscribe. And can we ask you guys a favor? Can you watch these within the first 36 hours? Because it gets us more views, which gets us more dollars, which gets you more episodes. And of course, follow us, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time.